Hello there, baby dolls. What a pleasant surprise to see you. I've got a very special episode for you. What really happened with Richard Hart and Hex? What happened in the last bull market? Did Richard dump on everybody? Did he scam everyone? Okay, we're going to go through everything. There are facts, and there is speculation. And I'll tell you right now, the conclusion is no, he didn't scam anyone. No, he didn't dump. What he did is he tried to do a master plan. This is how, as I see it, and I'm going to put all the pieces of the puzzle here for you, okay? You're going to see that the only thing Richard is guilty of is spending probably 50 to $100 million pumping his own coin. No dumping, okay? We're going to go through together and I'm going to show you everything as I see it. Okay. So firstly, what really happened? Okay. In that bull market. So this is my events storytelling. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are a lot of facts in here. Speculation. You'll see the speculation part when it comes in, but it all makes sense. Okay. Now I want you to know as well, it's controversial. Why? At the end of it, friends, you're going to realize he really tried, man. Like he really tried. Like on paper, this is such a great strategy. Okay, man. I, I'm I'm at when I show you what he did, you're gonna be shocked. You're like, man, it was worth it. It was worth it. Okay. You're dealing with unknown information. You don't know the future, but I'm gonna show you how it played out. Okay. Now, also I want to remind you, friends, minus 99% couldn't even kill the community. It's still here, okay? It ain't going away, all right? So you already know the conclusion of this story. We're going to end up winning, all right? But let's continue. So what ends up happening is you're going to conclude, okay, that he absolutely pumped the living crap out of everyone's hex bags. That's right, bought. Bought, not sell, bought, all right? Now look at this, okay? All stealing claims are false. So you read people saying, oh, there's laundering and there's stealing and all these. No, no, uh-uh, no. Okay, we'll continue, okay? So... Firstly, Hex has an adoption amplifier, okay? Hex has an adoption amplifier and they raise 90,000 Ethereum. Now, I don't know the real number. That's what I've heard the number get thrown out. It's 90,000 or 120,000. It doesn't really matter, okay? You're going to get the idea. 90,000 Ethereum raised. So people to participate in the equivalent Hex ICO, it's not an ICO, it's adoption amplifier, right? He gets 90,000 Ethereum, okay? Now, people, when they see the tornado cash or they see money moving around, they're like, oh, so suspicious. No, man, it's just privacy. That's all it is, okay? That's why there's always that meme, where did the Ethereum go? Where did it go? Well, friends, you know, when you go and trade on an exchange, by the way, shout out to John, Mr. Johnny Chaos for this is the best example. He's like, when you trade on an exchange and you either lose your money or they're, they're their trade fee gets taken from you. Do you go message the exchange? Hey, what'd you do with my money? You're like, what do you mean, man? You use a provider, a product and a service and that's it, okay? So it's the same thing like that. Now let's continue. He raises 90,000 Ethereum here, okay? Raises 90,000 ETH here. He ends up selling the top, all right? So let's continue. So if you do that number, he probably makes around $300 million roughly around here. I did an average sell price of like 3,500. Maybe he's just selling it over time, but you know, those are the things we'll never ever really know. Okay. But let's continue. So what you end up concluding though is hunched back soy boys. They are the ones that sold hex minus 99%. Okay. It was basically an overvaluation of hex and it got taken to prices it should have never been, all right? So you can basically think of it like this. Hex should have never been above 12 cents, ever, okay? It should have stopped at 12 cents. You know, it couldn't even been five cents. Five to 12 cents should have never gone above that range. Everything above that range was pure Richard Hart glory. Why? It's because he told everybody, he made a commitment at the start, he says, Hex is designed to do a 10,000 X in less than two years, okay? So for Hex to finally hit that very top price, which I'm gonna show you right now, to stick to its word, to do the 10,000 X, it had to hit this 55 cents, okay? 
right? So if you just draw the ruler from the very, very, very bottom, you go to the very, very, very top, you get the 10,000x bang, okay? This is a 10,000x. So let's continue. So <clears throat> as I see it, he collects this 90,000 ETH, you know, Ethereum's like 200 bucks. He sells the top at like 3,500 average price, pockets 300 million, okay? He then spends 25% of it to pump hex up. Now, do we have evidence? No, I don't know the exact dollar amount. I'm just guessing from all the times I've watched him stream, he likes to think of stuff like if he's gonna participate in something, he'll think about it like, okay, leave two thirds, spend one third. That's kind of his mindset. So perhaps, you know, he made 300 million, he spends, I don't know, like a quarter of it, cause you gotta pay tax, I don't know what happens, right? But he spends like 75 million of it. He, go, he just finally, he buys it, people are dumping down and he's just, he's, he's fighting the offers over time to push it up and up. Now we continue, okay? Now, what we'll end up concluding is, he ends up believing that the game theory and the staking and all the pulse chain parameters would be enough to keep it bid. Now, what I mean by that, I mean by on this price chart, basically, it was hopefully enough to keep it in this zone, okay? Above like 10 cents, okay? With all that buying, unfortunately, it wasn't, okay? As we all end up knowing, okay? But let's continue. So what he did was, Right, it's actually it's actually a genius plan. All right, when I look at it, okay, it's it's a freaking genius plan. Listen to this. This is what he did. Okay, okay, he used Ethereum to give leverage to the hex and pulse chain sacrifices. So what he did was, all right, friends. So let's say if he ran the sacrifice without injecting the money, it was going to be like two cents or three cents, or four cents, okay? But what he said is, he goes, wait a minute, I know a lot of people are gonna put in their hex to sacrifice. So, if I can inject my own money that I made from selling the Ethereum top, if I can pump hex up, I've given it leverage because everybody's hex that they're gonna throw in, maybe there's somebody with a portfolio value of 200,000 when hex is two cents, okay? But if Richard pumps up hex to 10 cents, you know that guy's 200,000? Now it's worth 1 million. Now they're all paper gains, right? So effectively, that person sacrificing his money, he's not sacrificing 200,000 anymore. In his mind, perception of value, because remember, Mark Richard is a master at marketing, he's a master at all of this. He's like, wait a minute, I've now showed the market using my own money that I made, okay, that this thing is now valuable. And they should value it much higher, okay? So that hex that they put in, it's not 200,000, they are throwing away a million. And on paper, it makes sense because those people who sacrificed, including me and everybody else, you could have, sold it and taken your money, but you didn't. Why? Because you value it, all right? So that was what I mean by leverage, okay? So remember, you have all these people whose portfolios went up a 5X, 10X from him injecting, okay? So the sacrifice raise was basically, I wanna say artificially boosted, but not really, because you don't really know, right? Where's the market really gonna value these things? Because I guess he really did believe the staking, the game theory, the bull market, everything was basically giving this like a dance with destiny higher. That's what he thought, all right? And it was true, but there is a point of overvaluation. And we know this by Metcalf's law. Okay, at some point, the rate of people coming in wasn't enough. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so that's what I mean by leverage. Okay, so in theory, Pulse and PulseX, right? the value of people's sacrifices is now much higher than what they otherwise would have been, all right? Now, here's the thing. So a lot of people will say, oh, tax evasion, all these bogus claims, they're all junk friends, just throw them out. There's people that know what they're talking about, okay? There's just people speculating, okay? So now here's where it gets interesting. In September, 2021, Hex reached its big heights. 
Richard thought he had the perfect plan. Why? Because he bought Hex up when he thought Bitcoin was in a bear market. Now, now does it all make sense, friends? It all makes sense, right? So you see this red box here? Richard calls the top. I remember down here, he believed we're going to 10K. He said he believed straight was 10K. So, you know, this part here. So when did Hex start pumping, friends? It started pumping here. You had the pole chain sacrifices as well. So he thought all of this was a Bitcoin bear market. Okay. He really thought that was Bitcoin bear market, but actually it was Bitcoin complacency rally. Now I'm going to show you Wall Street cheat sheet. Complacency, right, friends? Look where complacency is up here. Okay, so he thought we were like going deep into the bear market at that point, but he was a bit too early. All right, now that complacency rally, it throws things a bit off. That's all with the guessing of all these, okay? Because you had the final leverage, you have FTX buying, Celsius buying, everyone on leverage, upon to leverage, okay? Let's continue. Now, a reason I believe this, why? It's because, all right, in two out of two cycles, Bitcoin's bottom was one year after the top. So you go to the top, you walk forward 12 months, it makes its bottom, all right? Now, if we go to Bitcoin, friends, right here, you'll see, all right, look, this is what actually ends up happening, okay? We top out in November, which screwed everything over, and the FTX collapse was exactly one year later, all right? But we don't know that that's going to happen, right? So in his mind, the retail mania top is here. So look what happens here. So he thinks initially, he's like, hey, if Bitcoin bottoms out, again, May should be the Bitcoin bottom. Look at this, friends. Do you see this? Look when Richard thought, doesn't this make sense now? Look at this. We are now here. Look at this. This is mid-May. This is right here, mid-May, friends. Does this now make sense? Richard Hart, he told everyone, I think we're good to go for mid-May. I think we're good to go. Now, why was he saying that? Does it make sense now, right? It makes sense because we were capitulating. Duquan had to liquidate. Luna goes bust. Everything goes blows up, okay? Starting to make sense, right? Now, let's continue. Of course, Fred, by the way, this is very controversial. Why? Because people say, no, 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 it was the developers. Or we needed more time. Or something came out. Mm, no, nah, I, I knew. I'm like, this guy's making a captain's call. He knew the market's not ready, okay? He's making a decision an executive CEO, captain's call, leader, founder decision. He goes, nah, this is ain't, this ain't, this is not it, okay? But this is why when you back someone like this, friends, this is why when you listen to Mr. Westcott Crypto, shout out to Mr. Westcott, he's saying, guys, the dude clearly knows what he's doing. You all go, just, just shut up. You don't know how many decisions this guy makes on average that makes him win. So this is one of them that like could have, that saved the community, all right? Okay, let's continue. So, he got the launch thing a bit wrong, but he ended up saving it at the end, okay? Now, I just want to continue again. So, you know, he sees what I mentioned here. He mentions that the market conditions are trash, and he goes, like, in May, as we're crashing, he's like, oh, crap, we haven't bottomed. This isn't the bottom. It's been one year after Bitcoin. This this isn't the bottom, okay? it's, And he's probably also looking at Ethereum and altcoins and everything else, okay? So he's looking at stuff. He's like, hmm. No, this, this is not a bottom. This is like anxiety, fee, capitulation. That means there's worse to come, okay? And then if you look at the Hex chart here, look, Hex takes a big beating, right? A big beating after that, right? The fake mid-May launch is cancelled, okay? So <clears throat> here's the thing, okay? In hindsight, it looked like Hex was a bear market hedge. Does it make sense now why Richard was saying Hex is a bear market hedge? Because... In his mind, Bitcoin was in a bear market here, all right, with altcoins because he believed this was the top, right? So he calls the top here. So he's like, oh, golly gee, like this is a bear market, right? He thinks this is a bear market. So as Hex is going to the freaking moon here, so Hex tops out here, friends. Hex tops out in September, right? See here? Hex tops out in September. Look at that. Look at that. So while Bitcoin is freaking dying, Right, we have the pulse chain sacrifice, and the pumping is happening from him. Right, and he's like saying, "See, market." He's basically trying to show the market. There's a big whale here. I'm the big whale. All right, and this thing is worth diamonds. Okay, I value it as diamonds. And look at all the money I'm committing in. All right, so that's the signal he's trying to send to the market. But as you're going to learn, friends, 
You, no one's bigger than the market. No one. Not even Richard Hart with like all this money. The psychology of human of humans and these cycles, they are much more powerful than you can think of, all right? They are truly represented in the charts, okay? So, of course, I mentioned here, if you had a crystal ball, he should have waited one year and pumped it during 2022. I'm guessing if he could rewrite history himself, he would have done that. But he decided, nope, it is more important for me, Richard Hart, to show that Hex could do a 10,000x in less than two years. So he made the captain's call. He goes, nope. I told people it will do a 10,000x. I'm going to blow the funds now. This is the better thing to do, okay? And that was the decision he made. Now, obviously, if we could go back in time, it would be better. Don't pump it above 10 cents, all right? Buy it in our bear market, okay? But I guess, you know, that's why, friends, the next bear market might not play out as everybody thinks. Maybe Hex doesn't drop minus 99% in the next bear market. Maybe you'll find someone, a duck in a pond, learned from this. Maybe that's why. So French, Richard's smart. Okay, he, he knows. He's looking at Arbitrum. He's looking at Soilana. He's looking at all these things in the bear market, and he's learning. He's gathering information that all these other plebs don't learn. He's learning. He's like, oh, okay. In the next bear market, in like three, four years, whenever, to get attention, what I've got to do is like, you know, wait for Bitcoin to recover, wait a certain time, then do this. Like he, he's got, he, he's figured something out. Okay, what's more optimal to do? All right. Now, now let's continue. All right. So he stuck to his word that 10,000x was more important, all right? Now, <clears throat> I want to ask you, what do you think about this so far? So there's quite a bit to really learn through, right? Now, it also makes sense, right? He was telling everyone two more weeks for Pulse Chain. It's an incentive for everyone not to dump your hex because you get your p-hex. It basically leaves the offers free so he could reward the community. That plus all the hex sacrificed, he thought would create a big price floor. So it was basically leader founder. See, that's why, friends, it's, if it was VCs or any other altcoin, they're dumping the coin, right? With him, for someone to chase glory, he really wanted it to be a bear market hedge. Okay, but as we find out, we're kind of just in the DeFi category, right? So if Bitcoin, Ethereum is sick, we're just going to be sick no matter how much money you throw at it, at it okay? So with this, it, it does make sense when you look at it, okay? Now, this whole P hex, E hex thing, it, it, you can kind of like play it out in your mind. He just didn't want it to suffer as are the other altcoins did. Okay. And we'll never know really does he have money on the side? Could he have rescued it? Does he know to wait and then pump it up later? That's a game of chess that you, you never get a true answer for yourself. That's where it really comes down to the community moving forward from here. Okay. So look at this. So I think all of this was a noble plan why right. so he bootstrapped hex community he wanted to do it permanently at the top but unfortunately the truth is we made a lot of absolute schizophrenic scum way too wealthy they dumped mercilessly and the inflation ravaged the bids so look i know friends because we know these people personally you want to call them like scum and evil words but the truth is it's just markets man it was just overvalued hex reached hex, hex only had 50 to 100,000 people in there, okay? It, it didn't have enough people. You know from Metcalf's law, okay? So you can throw as much money as you want. It's just you're, you're handing money away, all right? So it, the 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 rate of people joining stopped. So, you know, if we got more and more people coming in, but this is the tough part, how are you going to get more people in when the whole freaking market is exhausted now? Crypto is exhausted and it's going to head into a bear market. It's going to contract, you see? So we had basically used up all the ammo in the bull market and that's just the story of how it goes now one thing i know about him all right i've never met him of course but he always has a game plan ready no matter what you throw at him okay so i'm gonna say i'm very confident this happened at one point okay he looks at the price chart and he says man this minus 95 percent sucks but if i save it now I rescue all the weak scum. I should delay gratification. I should let all the cowards suffer for another one year, even if it drops minus 99%. And you know what? It did. It did be all the way down, as you can see, friends. As you can see, that's what happened. All the way down, 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 down. And the, the, where, are we, where are we even with combined hex? It's about like 1.4 cents. So we're down like 94, 97%, okay? I also wanna show you something cool. like. <laughs> If you imagine, for example, 
Hex never went above, let's say he, let's say this was actually the top friend. Let's say this was a blow off top. Or let's say it was actually he, 10 cents. Think about this, from 10 cents down back to like just under one cent, it's a 92% drop. Link dropped minus 90%. Polkadot dropped minus 93%. Cardano minus 93 or 94. If that happened, we would have been in line with every other altcoin, okay? If we stopped at 10 to 12 cents. But you can kind of feel now the plan was to leverage us up, make everyone sacrifice, right? And so the thing's more valuable and collect more funds and people value Pulse Chain and Pulse X more. But as we obviously, obviously know, people are stupid. <laughs> I don't like calling them stupid, but a lot of people are just monkeys. They have no idea. So even though people sacrificed $100,000, they're selling their Pulse X for 10,000. They don't care. It, it didn't change anything in their mind, okay? And I guess Richard just he's even saw, even with leverage, even with gaming, even with staking, even with all these game theory, it wasn't enough to stop people from destroying themselves. This is why you get to see, friends, markets consume souls. They just hit a point where we can't go up unless we sacrifice someone. You know, it's crazy how it works. So that's why I think at one point he saw that chart, minus 95%. He's like, hmm, I really want to pump this up. I don't want these people to sell it down. Minus 99% is going to look really bad. But he probably looked at Cardano <clears throat> and he's like, hmm, you know, Cardano dropped to minus 98%. It still came back, you know. He, he probably looked at that, right? For, for real, friends, you know. And he's probably looking at his options, and he's like, "Hmm, I don't want, I don't want these weak cowards with me. If I rescue them now, they're going to be heavier dumping on me later on. If I rescue them, they're going to dump on us harder later. And honestly, that's the right decision to make for the long term. What you and me want is for someone to pump it, don't we? Yes, that's what we want." Me and you want someone to come and just pump the living crap out of it. But you and I, we have faith that these shark scum are going to hold. Truth is they won't, okay? They're looking for an exit. Good thing is, friends, we've suffered this whole year. They're out. You've seen a lot of people left a lot of weekend. People just, you're not cut up for it. They're gone, okay? This is it's what he wanted. This is exactly what he wanted. The bids are thin, the offers are thin. People aren't gonna be selling on the way up now, they've sold now. He's rinsed everyone, everyone. Now, not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. Go buy a bond, see how that works out. I don't really know, but I'm just, it feels like something like that is happening. Now, another thing we learned, okay, from his experiment was Pulse, PulseX, EHEX, and PHEX, unfortunately, they share as one ecosystem coin. So we didn't add value everywhere. So that was another part of what he thought would happen. He goes, well, hex is stored of value, pulse chain is a layer one, and pulse X is a DEX. And they all have different value out in crypto. You know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and Uniswap and PancakeSwap, they're all different. Metcalf's law though. He's gonna know Metcalf's law now. I'm sure he knows it already, but it's the same people in the network, okay? Everybody in hex, Pulse Chain and Pulse X, it's the same people, okay? It's like 95% the same people. We made a pizza pie, but we just split the pie up. Unfortunately, Hex got ravaged. So the value of Hex permanently diluted to Pulse and Pulse X, okay? That's why Hex has basically taken a huge dump. And that's why you get to see things like me putting up the Pulse to Hex ratio and all these friends. So Ethereum and Bitcoin, have different intersecting communities. They have a lot of unique people in there that never cross over. And there's also DEX people as well, people who own the DEXs as well. Even though there is some crossover, but not all of it, okay? So he thought with his use case and his ability to sit, read the market, he goes, well, you know, there's value added everywhere. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we all got diluted and that's just that's just a reality of the situation. Now here's where it gets interesting. What about this pat Pulse Chain sacrifice funds? So no money's been stolen. There's 600 million in DAI sitting in a wallet, okay? Nothing's been stolen. You can see it on the chain, okay? Now, here's the thing. This is now speculation, okay? This is where I'm guessing. I think his master plan, so you remember Richard kept saying Bitcoin 10K? I always wondered why he never spoke about Ethereum when he loves it, okay? 
He loves Ethereum. Thinks that he calls Vitalik a genius. I mean, he forked Ethereum. He loves Ethereum. Okay, he, he put hex on Ethereum. He defected from Bitcoin maximalism to Ethereum. He loves it. I think he didn't want anybody to front run him in Ethereum. <clears throat> I think he kept talking about Bitcoin. I believe his plan was never to buy Bitcoin at 10K. I'm guessing those $600 million funds. So you, friends, you want to wonder, a lot of people wonder like, why did you raise unlimited money cap in a sacrifice for a DEX like Pulsex? And I only have one conclusion. And when you hear this, it makes sense. I think his plan was to use those funds to buy Ethereum at 500 bucks in the bear market. Okay. So he's basically, everyone's, he gets to sell the top. Bitcoin crashes to 10K, which is what he believed. And Ethereum would sit at 500 bucks. <clears throat> and he gets to use those funds and accumulate 1 million Ethereum. And guess what? <clears throat> His target for Ethereum, by the way, I'm not making this up. His target literally on a Twitter call, you know, I think in October or November of 20, October 2022, <clears throat> he thinks Ethereum's gone to 100K. That's right, I'm not making it up. He thinks Ethereum is going to 100K, right? I was very spooked by that number, but let's bring it down a real notch, right? Because friends, I was scared. I'm like, wait a minute, Richard saying 100K, like that's, that's big, okay? That's a big number. I wonder if he still thinks the same number now though, but I um, think about the number of 10K Ethereum. If he bought ETH at 500 bucks and then he gets to sell it at 10K later on, that's a 20X on everyone's selling the top. He turns that 600 million <clears throat> into 10 billion, right? Literally 10 billion. That could earn Ethereum yield. Do you know, that's a lot of money, friends. Imagine there was yield earning from a million ETH and the yield is rotating and then pumping up the whole freaking ecosystem. You can imagine him making some plan to do that. It, it would have been like a huge, huge boost. But unfortunately, as history goes, <clears throat> uh, Bitcoin didn't go to 10K. It stopped at 15. Ethereum didn't even go past $800 for like a very, very short amount of time. It stopped at like 880 went up to 2000, okay? So um, this is my speculation on his grand plan. And now that leaves us to the corrupt SEC. All right, now the corrupt SEC, right? They basically stop everything. Now they harm investors, really. So <clears throat> the markets, obviously, why have they sold Pulse, Pulse X and Hex? <clears throat> They've priced in Richard's absence, okay? And the lack of Pulse chain fund usage okay because now it's basically your gag now he can't talk he can't promote and he can't use the funds okay so and the funds are stuck in die while we're going to have a bull market all right so <clears throat> i don't know what his grand plan is i don't even know if he really wanted to buy it i don't know i'm just telling you is what i was feeling okay the grand plan so i just want to remind your friends yeah so <clears throat> it really does feel like you know above that 12 cent mark was fluff it was just yeah, the market just didn't value it. It was an overvaluation, <clears throat> right? But that's all markets. Markets get overvalued and they mean revert and that's just how they go. So where to from here? Well, I've got to remind you again, right? So minus 99% could have wiped everybody out. There's a community. There are many projects launching. You saw Fame, the pH system. You have Liquid Loans. You even have Nine Inch coming. You have all these communities coming in and building Everyone believes, believes in real DeFi. There's no middlemen. There's no VCs. You didn't see any of that, okay? And it's very aligned with free speech and all these other, like, you know, all these other things that are very universal, okay? It reminds me of, like, <clears throat> American grassroots, right? The American constitution and all that. It reminds me of, like, we've gone back to, like, the 1700s. America's being founded, and it feels like a wild, wild west. And it's, it's you on your own merit and working, friends. Whereas the other chains are more like these, like, yeah, you can make some money, but you're going to get dumped on <laughs> by the insiders and they're just going to like leave for the next cycle. Okay, that's the, the feeling I get with Pulse Chain and Pulse X. That's why it's really important, the communication, the messaging for everyone to, to be known of like, hey, it's real DeFi, it's free speech and all these, okay? Because I think there is a large part of the population, this speaks to them compared to all these other chains that are just going to get dumped on everybody. So after listening to all that, I just want to remind you as well, <clears throat> the dude's always got a plan. 
even from shout out to Miguel. So Mr. Miguelie, <laughs> um, also Miguel loves Squirtle as well, friends. So Miguel, when he spoke to him in Miami, he was like, the dude's really smart. He's like Elon Musk in terms of like, when you present to them options, like, hey, do we go left or right? You know, do we choose A or B? Do we make the, the logo blue or red? Like their brain can like forecast each path and they, they know, okay, what's five steps ahead look like in both paths? And they go, okay, I'll choose that path. You know, do I want spaghetti or do I want meat pies? It's all right. Hmm, spaghetti's good. Why? Because of this, like, that's how they think. And they, they make these decision trees with everything in their life, everything from how they manage time, how they reply to people, how they talk to people, what they do on the weekends, right? With most of us, we're just lucky to brush our teeth in the morning and get by, okay? So, you know, we're half of us just winking at friends. Most of us are just winging it, okay? So <clears throat> I know it's been a long, long, deep intellectual discussion and a thought process. I want to know what you think after seeing all these friends. So <clears throat> I want you to know at the end of the day, doesn't mean it's dead, doesn't mean anything. It means, look, remember I told you at the start, was it worth it? He, he did everything. It, it looked like it would be worth it. it was, it's just that we ran out of bull market. That's it. The bull market just ended. Okay, so it makes you think, though, cycles. He tried so hard to make us disconnect from crypto. But market forces were much more powerful. All right. Now, what about the other way? What about him being absent still isn't enough to keep us down forever? What about the optimistic path where the thought of Bitcoin hitting 100K, the thought of Ethereum being $300 for a swap fee, the thought of 140 content creators, the thought of Hex and Pulse Chain going on a hated rally because everybody hates it. What if that sparks something to return it back up somewhere, Okay and actually pump higher than everyone thinks. And you never know, friends, maybe the guy's got like not no expectations. <laughs> maybe he's just got an extra like 5,000 Bitcoin that he wants to sell or like 80 million bucks he's just gonna pump in. He's just waiting for it, right? <clears throat> he's not gonna waste a dollar. He, he, friends, that's why I'm just telling you, he probably let go of the idea of the price chart during the bear market during this year. And he's like, all right, screw you guys. You're not valuing my thing or oh, I'm gonna get a plan to show you, okay? What's his plan going to be? No one knows. Only one way to find out. We're on this ride together, friends. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button all. Don't forget to tell mum and dad. Still going to make it. I'm going to catch you very soon.